these videos and images and photographs, it took 30 years before they released them. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. Because they weren't released before the 30th anniversary. So nobody saw these at the time. And the only thing was available was a couple little images that you would get on the news channel. Yeah. Or nice photo plates that were put in like different magazines and books and stuff like that. And there's only a couple of dozen shots from each mission that were available. That was it. You could get a postcard and you've yeah. got postcards, right? And they're airbrushed. They're touched up. Yes. Airbrushing was how retouching was done before they invented Photoshop, which came well after Apollo. So this was all manual retouching and airbrushing. And people are pretty skilled at it, and you can get some good results. But what we've got here are the astronauts, or whoever it is that's in their spacesuits. We don't know it's the astronauts. We assume it is, but we shouldn't assume anything from, from Apollo. It could be actors. It could be stagehands, it could be anybody who was walking past and was told to get in the space suit and go out in there and wander around for a bit. Could have been anything. In reality, it probably was those guys because that would keep down the number of people that would be yep. involved. That's true. And they couldn't be seen elsewhere. They had to be seen to be doing their job. What they volunteered for, I mean, they all volunteered for Apollo. They were interviewed for it, and they had to go through lots of tests for it, so they were committed to what they were doing. What they were not committed to was faking it. They wanted to do it for real. When you work together with 60 guys training, and your friends start dying, you know we're definitely opposed to participating in any kind of fakery. Yes. Right? and your life and your family's lives were threatened, you just couldn't come right out and say it. Yeah. You'd be very well controlled on what media and what you were to say for the media. So the only thing they had was the photographs and these videos to show it to the people. And of course, those are the photographs and videos that took 30 years to come out. And the other thing about anybody could have jumped in a spacesuit, that's fine, but I think with the 60 people that were involved there and that the fact that the suits were specifically designed individually made for each astronaut to practice with they were probably determined to show the fraud themselves they wouldn't just have somebody else come in there to do it these guys were better at that it was a very professionally run operation it had to be because they had to fool the world as I've said many times, Apollo was a brilliantly executed propaganda exercise, and it had to be seen to work. That's what propaganda is. It has to be seen to work. It had to fool the world so that America were ahead technologically in this particular area than the Soviet Union. Because don't forget, this is all going on at the same time as the Vietnam War is going on. So we've got the space race, which is being bigged up by the media, We've got the Vietnam War, which is being downplayed by the media. We've yeah. got local opposition to the Vietnam War, which is not being reported as fully as some of the other things are. People are being shot dead for protesting against the Vietnam War. And President Johnson, who was president at the time, has to try and do something about it. Then he's got the racial problems with Charles Manson and... <laughs> Oh, Martin, yeah, right. Martin Luther King, all of that stuff was going yeah. on. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's uh, Laurel Canyon, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's where Charles Manson was living at the time. Laurel Canyon, check it out. There's some very, very strange things went on in Laurel Canyon. The links between the intelligence services and the music scene. Yeah, Who were the people exactly. there? How were they being operated? Anything to try and incite the people to revolt, right? was going on. Everybody was trying to do exactly the same thing. I think the biggest focus that NASA had to contend with was to successfully launch a Saturn V rocket. Yes. They would have to control the power of that rocket just to lift it off, just to get it out of sight, get it running five, six minutes under yes. power, and put on the biggest show they possibly could with the largest ballistic missile that they'd ever manufactured 
and they couldn't allow it to blow up. The, the engines wouldn't need to be running at full throttle because they're not lifting the entire weight. It only needed to lift the fuel that it was carrying. And to keep that sound level down to the fact that they needed to pour millions of gallons of water on that thing just to keep this, it's not for the heat of the engine. It's the sound vibrations that were coming off of there would shake the vehicle apart if they didn't suppress it with water. The Saturn V, those F1 engines, if they were running at full throttle, were running 180,000 cycles per second. That's how they're vibrating at. If you were anywhere close to that, to running at well over 200 decibels on the thing, you would liquefy a human body. Yeah. Liquefy. They scare the birds away from the damn thing because even if you're a mile away, it'll kill a bird flying in the air. Just the sound waves alone. I forget which one did a night launch on it. You can see the sky actually lights up. You can see the waves lighting the sky up. It's vibrating the air molecules so rapidly that it turns to light. It makes them light up. That's incredible when you see that. And don't forget Walter Cronkite, they had bunkers for them to view at three miles away, right? And the buildings had to be torn down after the launch because it it damaged the building so severely, just the sound waves. And I tried to find that audio. I heard it once, but I couldn't get a recording of it. And it's now gone. The closest viewing of a Saturn V rocket was six miles or 10 kilometers. The sound volume at that distance was 134 decibels. Now the police and military use 140 decibels as a deterrent because you cannot physically stand the pain threshold of the human body at 140 decibels will deter you from being anywhere near that. That's what they use to to do that. So at 10 kilometers, it was still 134 decibels. Anybody closer than that needs to have some kind of a bunker or protection on that to keep away. So it was the biggest show on Earth. It was designed to impress the world, and it did so. It was promoted relentlessly from yeah. Apollo 8 onwards. Apollo 8 was December 1968, followed by Apollo 9, Apollo 10, Apollo 11 in July 1969. So they had a relatively short period of time, but because it was a relatively short time, you could keep the interest going. Oh, we've looped around the back of the moon on Apollo 8. Oh, look, we've got everything working on Apollo 9. Oh, look, we've gone back to the moon on Apollo 10. We nearly touched down, but we didn't because we're saving it for Neil. Yeah, five months apart average, right? Yeah. On the launches. And now, the last time... Artemis was launched was 2014, eight years, and it still can't get it off the ground? No, it can't get it off the ground. It's supposed to launch today, and it's been cancelled. could be launching on Friday. It could be launching sometime in October, if they have to change the engine. It's not coming back because they haven't developed the heat shields for it yet. I know. That's going to be the interesting part. In fact, I saw a recent report that the heat shield on Orion launched in December 2014 very nearly failed. It was a new heat shield. It wasn't the old Apollo-style heat shield, which is known as Avcoat 5061. And it's a resin impregnated into a honeycomb structure which creates the heat shield. It's about three inches thick and it weighs quite a lot. What? Well, guess what they've gone back to for the heat shield of Orion? Avcot 5061. They suddenly found the formula again. And this is from Lockheed who are, who are building the thing. I wonder how they're going to connect all of that technology back in. And if it actually worked in 1969, and everybody says, oh, it's not compatible with new technology. Well, the only technology that is current today is the technology that actually works. Yeah. So the stuff in the 1960s is the latest and greatest technology, if it in fact worked. I think we've demonstrated fairly conclusively over the past several years of investigation that it didn't. Some of it may have worked. Maybe the heat shield did work. Well, you see, if you bought a car 
and it was delivered and dropped in your driveway, but it doesn't have any wheels on it. And the manufacturer said, well, here's your new car. It doesn't go anywhere. Wheels are old technology, and we're not using them anymore. And we'll let you know when we get new technology, and you buy the car, and it sits in your driveway, and you can't use it. That's basically what NASA is doing. Yeah. They're saying we throw out all the old technology, all that stuff that worked, and we're going to develop new stuff because some of the stuff we have now is not compatible with older technology. Well, why don't they just put the wheels back on the car? Because they work really well then, apparently, for their claim. That's what they claim, yeah. The SLS that we're hearing about today or this week as it launches is not even new. They say it's NASA's new rocket. It's not new. It's a, an enlarged version of the space shuttle using the same main fuel tank, the big orange thing in the middle, and two white solid fuel rocket boosters on the side. That's what the space shuttle used. Space shuttle was first designed in 1981. Well, first flew in 1981. You realize the Orion computer in the Orion is a... 486 DX computer from 1987. I could well believe it. It's probably the only thing that'll get through the radiation. They built that thing for the space shuttle, but that hardened piece of equipment that they have, that circuit board and the, the CPU and everything on it, is, what's that, 38 years old? Yeah, about that. That's the latest and greatest. Because the new technology, all of the computer chips are so fine that any ionization of it coming through the craft will literally take out the boards. And they're going to have that problem with the cameras. If they launch Artemis, I want to see a live video feed camera without any fisheye equipment on it or anything else to the moon and around and back right through re-entry and down. They should yeah. have a live video feed running and they should also have live independent cameras in there from national media resources from many countries should all be on board because it's not heavy equipment. Well, they're not taking any astronauts this time, so they've got plenty of weight to play around with. And they don't have to pressurize it. They don't need any consumables for them. They don't have to heat it. They don't have to do anything. It can be an empty shell with just with diagnostic equipment on board, sensors and that to pick up how much radiation and, and how much other stuff is happening, right? And surely you'd think that by now, 2022, NASA would know about radiation. So they're still having to test for it. They're still having to put sensors on board. Don't they know how much radiation there is in space? Obviously they, not. They won't admit to it no, because that's they claimed it wasn't a problem at the time. I'm sure when they come up and a company is designing, it doesn't matter whether it's the computer systems or the camera systems or whatever, communication, right? The company will have to be given the real information on what the radiation is. And of course, NVIDIA canceled their contract. To build the stuff, they just said, we can't deal with it. You know, our graphics cards are just getting burnt out. They were just simulating that for the ISS. That's below the Van Allen belts and they yeah. couldn't build a graphics card to deal with it, just for low Earth orbit. And That's how sad it is. Yeah, 200 miles up is relatively safe for humans and for equipment. <laughs> Except the equipment's getting burned out with the radiation. That's and NVIDIA good. said, you know, like when they were testing it, they were obviously given the real amount of radiation to deal with. And they said, well, it's not a large enough market. We sell millions of graphics cards worldwide. We don't need to build, you know, half a dozen for NASA, right? It doesn't matter how much money they were being offered. They couldn't figure out how to protect the video cards. I have the documents on that. The right. thing about vacuum is if it's not a problem, if it doesn't have a force. All these people claiming that, why are they spending billions of dollars testing stuff in vacuum chambers if it's not a problem it's not a problem but they'll never put a human inside the Glenn Research Center because that would be a problem they wouldn't even be able to turn that down half of the force that that thing's capable of doing it would be far too dangerous and then NASA 
when they're sitting there saying, oh, it costs $12 million to build a spacesuit, and we only have four functional spacesuits, and they're on the ISS. What are the ones that they're using in the pool around the ISS when they're practicing with? Those are, you know, dive suits. They're not spacesuits that they're using. So those aren't functional to even test. Even that's how they claim they test them. But if it costs $12 million per suit to build, that's what they claim. Why would they subcontract out to a costume designer for a movie production studio for three and a half billion dollars to make the spacesuits? You got $12 million a piece. How many spacesuits can you get for a three and a half billion dollar contract? And why are you using costume designers from the movie industry to make them? And then again, if vacuum isn't a force, why do they cost $12 million if NASA builds them? Why haven't they been tested? You should have an airlock on the Glenn Research Center and you could put 40, 50, it's 150 feet across in there. You put 40, 50 guys in there and let them all practice in their spacesuits. If it's not a force, if it's not a problem, nobody has ever gone in there and nobody will go in there.